right, this is a quick introduction to the general workflow in Shape version 5. First of all, there should be good preparation and uh, there are a few questions that one should think about before starting to model with the shape. First of all, can the object type and the, the data that you have uh, be modeled in shape at all? If you can't uh, figure out this from information on shape being available elsewhere, then don't hesitate to contact us and uh, ask about it. What kind of data will be modeled? And uh, how should the data be formatted to best compare them with shape output? And uh, can these data be incorporated directly into, sh into shape? Can it reconstruct automatically or uh, how will I compare these data in, uh, in a format that cannot be read in, into shapes like fits or something like that? Do I have to convert them to other types of uh, input like PNGs or other image formats and so on? And uh, most importantly, is there a clear hypothesis for the model that I'm going to model. Remember that uh, shape does not automatically, in general, automatically reconstruct a model for you, but you have to put all possible information into the model and construct it yourself and then compare it to the observations. So you need a very clear idea about what, what, is, the, what is it that you want to test basically shape tests an idea that you might have about the model and then you go on refining that model and such that it compares as closely as possible to the data. And an important point is uh, whether the data that you have and the initial hypotheses or model idea that you have, uh, are they suitable, for, suitably constrained one important point is also whether the data that you have and the uh, model idea, do they constrain your model sufficiently? Can you get new information from it once you make your model? Or is it uh, too degenerate to provide any new information at all? So it is very important to think about additional constraining assumptions that your model, model might provide say if there are symmetries in it, uh, simplifications of other kinds of that, that might help constrain the model in addition to the data that you have. And of course, is there a clear scientific goal for generating a 3D model? Do you need a 3D model for that or are there more simple ways of uh, explaining your data? Does the 3D model provide additional information to, to what you already have? You might start with an image or other type of data, spectra, and uh, there are questions about it. Somebody has asked questions in the literature or there are questions that you have. And uh, then you probably have an idea about uh, how to solve this problem, how to answer the questions that arise about that object. And then you go on and uh, construct a 3D model, which you render in some way that you can compare with your data, either images or spectra, PV diagrams, channel maps, etc. And uh, these you confront then with the observations. Here's an observation of a PV diagram and here's a model. And uh, then you get come to any possible conclusions that you might want to publish. Here's a, um, a case study of, of this kind of uh, workflow where the focus is on, on the Eskimo Nebula here. It's a planetary nebula. And another planetary nebula, the Ant Nebula, here to Hubble Space Telescope images. And uh, once you see these two, then and you make your a mental image of 
3D image of the anvil, or you could think that uh, as you rotate this image and see it along the axis, then it might actually look like the Eskimo Nebula. Here is a movie of a this illustrating this. First, we have a view that looks like the Eskimo Nebula, and then as we turn it 90 degrees, it uh, pretty much looks like the Ant Nebula. This particular example has been examined and modeled by two different groups, Sang et al. in the Astrophysical Journal and Garcia Diaz et al. also in the Astrophysical Journal. And uh, let's have a look at the, this, the kinematic analysis of uh, the Eskimo Nebula. Here's an image, an HST image, with uh, lines on top of it, which represent the slit positions that have been obtained by Garcia Diaz et al. to model the object, producing position velocity diagrams. And then the data can be prepared to incorporate into shape. Here, the image has been incorporated into the uh, image rendering and similarly the position velocity diagram. So it is convenient to prepare your images and PV diagrams in such a way that they fit uh, most easily in, in the images, image displays in shape. There are facilities, ways to do that using the observed uh, image button and tool for that. And then you go on and construct a 3D mesh model for the object. You might want to have the observed image in the background of the renderer uh, window here, viewport. And you can construct your object with the correct sizes and, and shapes. And uh, then you go on and render them where you can compare the final output, such as the image and the PV diagram with the observed images in the background. Once you're going through this loop several times, improving your model more and more until you're satisfied, then you produce your uh, final output from shape and uh, present it for with your observed data in, in your paper. You can have a variety of uh, ways here we have uh, spectra, line spectra, line shapes, image comparisons, and uh, images together with the PV diagrams. Here we have then at the end uh, the discussion of the results, which in you might have in this case the basic the main result was that uh, looking at the same object like here, the Eskimo Nebula as we see it from Earth, looking at it from a different angle, it uh, quite looks like another cat's eye nebula and the Saturn Nebula. So the conclusion was that uh, these three objects and possibly more objects make a separate class of evolution and origin of the planetary nebula.